We might be too young to have a spotted cow, but we are both diehard Packers fans. I could talk about this for hours. He was my legend. He was my quarterback one. Taysom Hill, forever in my heart. We have a kind of a reputation of being the young, the young diehard fans. How is that, Dr. Pepper Taysom? Amazing. Hey, good. Let's keep it over 25 minutes, all right? Welcome back into the Underage Packers podcast. This is episode 104 or 5. 104. Big B. It's been a way too long of a time. It's been a whole month since we recorded an episode. So, like, fill me in. How are you doing, man? Um, doing good. Um, pretty much doing the same stuff. Uh, yep. Pretty boring life over here, but absolutely. We're, it. we're getting ready for training camp. Life is yes. good. Absolutely. You know, this whole, we got six weeks here until training camp kicks off. So this whole six weeks, it's just like trying to keep the hype alive. You know, you have it in yourself. You're like, come on, just keep pushing through the monotony, monotony. I'm not using that word right. I know of life. Just get through, just get to camp and we'll be okay. I'm Joey, by the way. Thank you so much for tuning in here today. Um, Seriously. At this point in the off season, there are so many people you can tune into to hear much better thoughts than us. Um, so we truly appreciate you tuning in to the Underage Packers Pod at all places. We got, I, I wouldn't say a lot on hand today, but I'm excited to what we do have on hand, especially uh, the comments on Facebook that we'll get to in a little bit here. We'll talk about all the happenings that went on during mini camp and OTAs, but we won't bore you too long with that. Uh, and then we'll talk about training camp hype um, and all of that good stuff. So let's hop right into it with Big B. I, you have, I mean, you said your life was boring, but you've been having quite the excursions here on Packers Twitter lately. I mean, getting in trouble with witches. I'm, I'm glad that you haven't been cursed yet, at least as we know. Um, I mean, you're getting Sewell Douglas retweeting you, Jerry Taggy saying that you should be in the Packers fan hall of fame. That's pretty insane. Um, so, you know, what's this Packers Twitter life been like lately for you? But what I really want to ask you about is your trip that you made down uh, for you. It's down South to green Bay uh, or mini camp, you know, meeting all those players. How was that? I mean, just tell us about that trip. Oh yeah. Um, it was, it was phenomenal. I absolutely loved it. Met Rasul Douglas, Bobby mm-hmm. Tunyon, Rich Passaccia, Joe Barry, a bunch of others, including Kurt Benkert. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, such a fun trip. Got um, an 8x10 signed by all the players, and I got a Sick. Kurt Benkert autographed 8x10 as well down there. But it was just a lot of fun, especially peeking through the, uh, what, is it, what is it, the tarps yeah. uh, up on the fence. It was just an all-around great day, and I – absolutely love meeting players it's one of my favorite things to do it's almost addicting like I just want to do it like all the time it's like it's like that good drugs you're taking yeah was there any memorable interactions you had especially like Joe Barry and Bruce Versace did they give you any good quotes like I just imagine Joe Barry's just such a high energy guy so I feel like if you ask him for a picture he reminds you know Joe Barry his personality reminds me of a, a high school teacher I have who just seems like he's cracked up all the time, uh, but he's really just happy all the time. Did you have any memorable interactions with Barry? Um, yeah, well, Joe Barry seemed really excited to mm-hmm. uh, get a picture with me. I don't know if it was because somebody actually asked him for a picture or he was actually taking a picture with me. <laughs> I guess you never know. But as Rich Versace uh, hit me so hard on my back when he left, like it, it, it's still stinging. Like that man. Rich <laughs> Versace. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to tell you goodbye. He just slaps you on the back. Yeah, that thing hurt. I'm going to be looking forward to that. I When we're at camp, I need to get a back slap from Rich Versace. That's that's on the camp to-do list now. Yes. I will never forget that. That is like an all-time memory for me. And <laughs> that, that's phenomenal. So, great, uh, great for you to get down to mini camp. I think... Next time you go down to mini camp or a, cl- a practice that's close to the media, I, I want to go with you and f- like be behind your shoulder filming. And I think it would be a great series to have. Like on the days practice is close to the media, 
the media ain't going to get you the scoops, but Big B is going to have the scoops that Rob Demosley is not going to have. I mean, you were the first to report that Sammy Watkins was there. So that was that was quite the inside scoop there from your tarp watching. Oh, yeah. Speaking of mini camp and OTAs, and another person that Big B got a picture with was Rashawn Gary, who this past week, as mini camp was wrapping up, he was still there on what was it, the you know, fifth or sixth week of OTAs. Mini camp has already passed, so this he does not need to be there at all. But Rashawn Gary, one of the only vets still there. Thanks for uh, to Wes West Hockwoods for sharing that video yesterday on Twitter, just seeing him carry the piece. So that was awesome to see. Um, now, well, let's get into the real meat of today's episode. All right, this is what I'm really excited for. One of our earliest podcast episodes was simply, it was around this time of the year too. It was simply going through Packers Facebook groups, which, wow, that was quite the trip. And recently I rediscovered my love for Packers fans on Facebook. So with that, I went ahead and dove into the comments from the Packers uh, Facebook post of their signing of Gabe Rickich the undrafted free agent kicker from Oklahoma. And we'll talk about that a little bit here. We won't bore you with that. But the most phenomenal thing about that, you know, you're just thinking, oh, it's a a backup kicker signing that might not even make the practice squad. Why would the comments be so exciting? And it's simply because of how great, great Gabe Brickage looks. I'll throw up a picture for our YouTube and Spotify listeners. I mean, he's got some great photos back in the Oklahoma days with that stash. So I I wanted to read some comments because – Facebook had quite the reaction to his appearance and specifically his mustache. First off, I won't read their names, but uh, one guy says he looks like someone killed his father and he spent a lifetime training on swordsmanship to track him down. But he would, he would at least politely introduce himself prior to killing his father's murderer. (laughs) Now this, I like, I have a feeling this is a movie reference that I'm not quite understanding because that happens a lot. You know, a lot of people will like make a movie reference and I'll pretend like I understand it and I'll laugh, but usually half the time I have no clue what they're talking about. So and we're looking at you Nagler, by the way. (laughs) Yes, we are. But like, if this isn't a movie reference, how did this guy put this whole thing together in his head that, and, and just judging off his looks, that's, that's really interesting. There must not be an NFL stadium within 5,000 feet of a school. That stash, UUFDA. I imagine that I can hear that law, that last comment there. Oofda. Uh, that sounds like a Northern saying. I love that. On, he's got the pedo stash on lock, that's for sure. Got another fan here. This, this one is kind of an underrated one. I like it too. It only got one laugh emoji reaction. But one guy says his last name looks like a baseball statistic. I don't, I mean, if you remove that last part, uh, the IC, then sure, BRC, that does look like a baseball stat. The pronunciation of his name is quite interesting. We had to look this up before recording. I was planning on just calling him Brick, like from Anchorman, because that would have been kind of funny. But it turns out his name is pronounced Brickich. Um, But yeah, it does kind of look like a, a baseball stat there. Yes, that is probably my favorite comment all, out of all these. <laughs> okay, the next one is the Dolly similarity is uncanny. You know, Salvador Dolly, Chris Brickich, you know, or Gabe Brickich, no difference. Last one here. <laughs> he says, watches top gun magic once. That's what happens. He does kind of have that rooster stash down, so I respect him for that. Uh, what would what would Gabe Brickich his call sign be? Stash. That's the easy one. Mustache. Something to do with the stash there. Okay, that was a phenomenal segment. Hopefully, Packers Facebook fans, please keep on giving us that content because it's pretty phenomenal. Uh, one thing though that has been on a lot of Packers fans' mind this offseason, ever since you know March really was oh my geez wheeze. When is Alan Lazard going to sign his restricted free agent tender? Is he trying to negotiate his restricted free agent tender? 
Is he trying to get more money out of the Packers from his limited, restricted free agent tender? No, dude. He just wanted to chill all summer. <laughs> like, I, I truly don't think there's literally anything behind him waiting to sign in. I can't blame him not wanting to go to OTAs, not wanting to go to minicamp. Uh, sure, that would be nice. Sure, Matt LaFleur wants it. But, hey, man, he found a way around it, and he still got his money. So I'm happy for Le- Allen there. Okay, so there's that. Packers fans were freaking out about Lazard, and Packers fans were also freaking out about whatever was going actually going on at minicamp and OTAs, which just makes me want to bang my head against the wall. I mean, uh, like there was I, – I can't believe people haven't learned this lesson, but we don't have to freak out about what's going on at minicamp or OTAs, folks. Like they're literally playing virtually seven-on-seven, seven, you know, Backyard football, whatever. Sure, they're professional athletes. But most of this part is chemistry building, learning the playbook for the young guys. I, you know, sure, like, once again, now the floor wants them there. Sure, it would be nice to have them all there to build each other as a team. But having them miss a few days of workouts in May and June, you can't be too concerned about that. And also, whatever they're doing, you know, I know people were freaking out about, I think it was Watson having struggles with drop passes. He'll figure it out. And if he doesn't, we'll worry about it in August. Okay. And even at that point, it would be too early to call him a bust if he's struggling with passes in his first ever training camp. All right. He's a wide receiver. But, but you know, Packers fans will definitely call him a bust if that does happen. Like, that is true. It's like almost like it's going to happen. Oh, yeah. If he struggles with drops in the preseason, the reaction is going to be even worse, specifically from Packers fans, than it was from the national media worrying about Jamar Chase in last preseason and his drops. I'm ready for it, though. Oh, yeah. I, I'm ready for it. And then, you know, if he follows the same path as Rashawn Gary, he will shut those haters up, you know. And I'm looking forward to that. Oh, yeah. So – you know, people like to get so tuned into this, and I get it with how the NFL works today, with how social media exists today. Everybody wants to ha- have wants to have a reaction to everything, and they want everything to mean something substantial. But we won't create that point. Many camp and OTAs are finally over, and we are, like I said earlier, six weeks away from training camp kicking off here on July 27th. And one thing that I'm sure a lot of people will be um, reasonably concerned about is David Bakhtiari and the progress he makes on his rehab journey. I understand completely all the fans kind of worry about him this year and in the future. I understand the, uh, like, you know, the, the, (laughs) the feeling that we paid him a uh, huge deal lasting four years didn't get to play at all the first year still in rehab what is it a year and a half later I get the worry I'm not blaming Bakhtiari at all I'm not calling him lazy or slow on this rehab progress because he has very little control over it it is just very unfortunate to have him go out there week 17 against Detroit he's great it's all happy yay 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 he's he plays great in the 20 snaps and then we need him in the biggest game of the year. He can't be out there. And still he would come around in June and he's not hundred percent when we expected him to be a hundred percent, at least for that playoff game. I thought that was the plan all along. So I get that. I get why, you know, plenty of people, including me are a little bit concerned about his future there. Um, So big B, any thoughts you have on David Bakhtiari, his rehab, and also kind of what this offensive line would look like without him? Yeah, well, I'm. I mean, it's hard to get concerned yet. Yeah. Like I'm. I'm at this point. I'm li- literally just waiting for training camp. See how they either just throw him out there or he gets slowly worked in to practicing. Like yeah. we just don't know. I mean, especially with the fluid, if there's stuff, stuff still going on in that department, we just don't know. But how I see the offensive line really shaking out, of course you have Josh Myers and mm-hmm. right or wait, 
Yeah, right guard is very interesting because you got Royce Newman who played crap ton of snaps last year, but now we got Sean Ryan as well, who we just drafted in the third round. I would think drafting Sean Ryan that high, he would get the start, but you never know. You know, yeah. Royce Newman seems to be like, I guess, the Lucas Patrick type. I think that's really yep. what he's going to be. Like, they just seem seem similar, like how that's going to work out. I'm, I am very interested to see how the offensive line works out. Like, I can see the at least seven different ways this offensive line can look week one. I think that's definitely one of the things I'll be watching very closely at training camp this year is how the offensive line will shake out. Yeah. I'm really interested to see just who, like you said, at training camp, what they throw out there. And I think they're going to try pretty much anything and everything. They want to get their best five out there. Um, center. Like you said, Josh Myers has that lockdown. But everywhere else, there's literally so many people that can play so many different positions. I mean, you got you talk about Josh, uh, John Runyon, Josh Nyman can play both tackles. Uh, Royce Newman, like you mentioned, Sean Ryan, a lot of people. I mean, heck, even Cole Van Lannan, the Wisconsin product, was getting starting reps out there at right tackle in minicamp, which I know I just said don't take anything away from any camp, but you can take things away from the starting line. All right. You can take things away from the lineup. Uh, so it's going to be really exciting to see. Well, it's not exciting because you would prefer just to have Elton and David back day one, but mm-hmm. it's going to be interesting to say the least. Uh, and like you said, you can't get too concerned about it yet. I just hope and pray. I guess it'll be good to go by, Elton, you know, week one. So we'll be looking forward to that when Packers training camp kicks off on July 17th or 27th. Um, So fast forward into training camp here, Big B, who do you think is one player who has to have a big camp this year? And this is kind of a video similar, uh, uh, like a video I'm putting out this Sunday where I'm talking about five players who have a lot to prove this year Who's one player you think has to show out in, uh, in camp this year? Ooh, man, that's a good question. Um, that's really tough. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Dean Lowry. You know, mm. um, I think Dean Lowry is on that like 50-50 of making the roster at this point. Like our our defensive line is actually surprisingly very deep. Like compared to all the other years, like it seems like the defensive line is always the weakest point of the defense, Mm -hmm. like so many years. And I don't think Dean Lowry will get cut, but you never know. He has a very high cap hit. And if we need some cap space, you know, if we make some type of big move that probably won't ever happen, but let's say it does, Dean Lowry will probably either get a um, pay cut or he might get released. So I think it might be Dean Lowry. Yeah, I was going to uh, throw in there to talk about possible surprise cut candidates, um, but it might be a little too early for that. But interesting to see your turn on Dean Lowry here. But I do agree. He does. I, I don't know if I would say he has to have a big camp. I'm not saying you have a bad answer there. Yeah. But I would agree that he does. I mean, I don't think he's going to get too much playing time in the uh, preseason. But he does he does have something to prove this year. You know, yes. it is a contract year. And honestly, I, I would be surprised if they re-sign him after he comes off this pretty big deal, at least for a player of his caliber as a, a lunch pail guy. But yeah, this season, heck man, you know, we'll have to see what happens with Dean Lowry. Wouldn't be surprised. I guess... I guess the way to turn this question around is, like you said, there's players ahead of him or players behind him that might just be so good in camp and preseason when, and the Packers say, hey, we'll take the money instead of mm-hmm. Dean. So yeah. we'll have to see how that plays out. One player that I'm going to say here is Juwan Winfrey, which is just like such a quite the deep dig there. <laughs> To, to scratch from the barrel for a player that has to have a good camp. But I do think, and I wouldn't think he's going to get cut if he doesn't have a really good training camp. But I think if Jawan wants to 
make a, I guess, could say a Alan Lazard type rise up to the roster, rise in this offense. I do think he does have to like fully go all gas in this preseason and training camp because he's been on that the bottom of the roster and the practice squad for the past few years now. I think this is a great opportunity for him to stop being the mini camp and training camp star and actually get that roster spot week one. Um, that wide receiver depth chart will be really intriguing to see how that ends up playing out because you have the rookies in Kristen Watson, Romeo Dobbs, Smart Torre. Torre, he's got to fight for a spot. You got a handful of other guys there that got to fight for a spot. And if Juwan Winfrey can, you know, knock a few guys off the mountain, you know, Malik Taylor, whoever else, he could earn that roster spot, especially because he does have a little bit of built up trust with Aaron Rodgers. And also the fact that he would be one of the few that has a few years in the system. So Juwan, the time, no, I got to point to my actual camera. The time is now, Juwan. We've seen you make all those catches in minicamp, according to those reporters, but the time is now to score an 80-yard touchdown every quarter in the preseason. All right, looking forward to camp. We got who has to have a big camp, surprise cuts after camp. Uh, it's it's going to be an exciting time. Family night will be on August 5th, and then just three days later, Green Bay ain't ready for what's about to hit it because these two people right here are heading to Green Bay. Week of August 8th. Don't stalk us, please. I was going to say or do, but that's I definitely do not, please. <laughs> but we'll be around. Yes. I mean, we're, we're pretty much going to be in a five-mile vicinity of Lambeau Field for those few days there. Really excited about it. Really excited to act like I know what I'm watching at practice, act like I'm going to take some intense notes in my mind, but actually just end up watching like the, the quarterback drills all day. Really excited for that. Um, nice. Also, the Packers training camp uh, content on underage Packers. Oh, my God. I'm getting the chills just thinking about it. So you're going to want to make sure you subscribe here for that. Cannot wait. We got some things in the works. Um, it's going to be really exciting. So, Big B, any final thoughts you want to add before we sign off? Jamal Williams. Jamal Williams. Oof. Mind blown. All right. That's all we got for you. Make sure to follow us on Underage Packers on all of the social channels. We really appreciate it. Talking like country pub now. That's all we got for you. We'll talk to you later. Go Pack Go.